If you'd like to know the difference between a crop sensor, like this one right here, the Nikon D3400, and a full-size sensor, like this one right here, the Nikon D600, stay tuned, this video is for you. Over the last several months, I've received a lot of questions and comments from my subscribers. And a lot of them had asked the question, what is the difference between a crop sensor and a full sensor? Well, again, our crop sensor right here is what's inside the Nikon D3400. And a full sensor is one that is inside this Nikon D600. Now, keeping in mind, the D600 is a relatively old camera. This was manufactured in 2012, so that's about five years old. The D3400 was manufactured last year in 2016, so it has newer technology in it. But the primary difference between these two cameras is the sensor size. And if you think about it, it's just the surface area. The full sensor has a much larger surface area to capture information. Now, this comes in very, very handy when you have low light conditions and you want a much better depth of field control. So, people will ask that question, can I shoot weddings and other professional type events with a crop sensor? Many professional photographers would say, no, you really want to stay with a full sensor. But what I'm here to do today is to take both of these cameras and we're going to go around and take a bunch of shots on this nice, bright, sunny day. I'm at a local park and I do have a subject with me. And we'll take a look at these shots and we'll kind of break them down. Now, I'm not a pixel peeper but I will jump into Lightroom and we'll zoom in a little bit and I'll talk about some of those differences when I'm done here. One thing I want you to note are a couple of significant differences. To begin with, the cost of the Nikon D3400 with just the body is right around $500. The cost of the Nikon D600, which you can still get on Amazon, runs right around $1,700. So it's quite a bit more. And then again, that's just for the body. Now a lens that you might use on the crop sensor you will not want to use on the full sensor. Could you use it? Yes. What happens when you use it? Well, it puts a shadow around the edges of the frame because the lens is not intended to cover a full sensor. Now you can use a full sensor lens on a crop sensor body. That might sound a little confusing, but you can go from big, step down, but you don't want to go stepping down to stepping up, if that makes sense. I'm back in the woods and we have some sun shining through the trees so we got some different lighting conditions here but I do have my subject with me and we have a lot of opportunities to take some landscape type shots and maybe some macros in there. What I'm going to do is I have the Nikon D3400 right here and this has the kit lens on it. Now this kit lens is the 18-55 to and with the Nikon D600 I have a kit lens with it and this is the 24-85. to now I'm aware that lenses do make the difference. However, I'm gonna go into aperture mode on both of these cameras and I'm gonna to try to keep the aperture about the same. I'm gonna go with ISO 100 as well and I'm gonna shoot in RAW. Now I'm gonna go around and just take a handful of photos and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you these photos but I'm not gonna tell you which one was taken with which camera. I'll do that at the end of the video. But I want to see if you can identify the differences between these cameras and keeping in mind the difference in cost. Again, the Nikon D600 for the body is right around $1,700. And with the Nikon D3400, just for the body, is right around $500. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right in and have some fun.
As we get started, I just want to level set real quick about these images. So I have 15 unique images here, one taken from each camera. So I have 30 total images. Now, as I step through these, I'm going to call out the file names and I'm going to call out 1A, 1B, for example. And as we go through this, feel free to pause the video so you can take a closer look at these images. And then notate which one you think was taken with which camera. And as I get to the end of this, I am going to tell you which camera was used for which images. And I'm going to also give you a few final thoughts and notes as we finish up this demonstration. Something else to pay attention to is in the upper left hand corner you can see some of the information that was used to snap the image. Keeping in mind, as I mentioned, I try to keep the f-stop around the same on both cameras. I've also taken all of these images and brought them into Lightroom and modified them to some extent. Any modifications I've made, I've tried to apply the same to both images, so that way the impact would be very similar. I've also tried to crop them so that the field of view would be very similar. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump right into this and have some fun. Let's pay attention here. So this is 1A, 1B, 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B, 3A, 3B, 4A, 4B, 4A, 4B, 5A, 5B, 5A, 5B, 6A, 6B, 6A, 6B, 7A, 7B, 7A, 7B, 8A, 8B, 8A, 8B, 9A, 9B, 9A, 9B, 10A, 10B, 10A, 10B, 11A, 11B, 11A, 11B, 12A, 12B, 12A, 12B, 13A, 13B, 13A, 13B, 14A, 14B, 14A, 14B, 15A, 15B, 15A, 15B. Okay, we're at the end of all of the photos that I have captured and I wanted to show in this demonstration. And now it's time to reveal which camera took which photo. And I'm not certain if you figured it out at this point, so I'm going to give you a hint really quick. I'm going to step back to image number 12. Now this is a telltale sign. So this is 12A and 12B. Now as I've mentioned before, one of the big advantages to a full frame camera is its low light capabilities. Now something I want to mention about these two particular images is that I applied no noise reduction to these images. So this is 12A and this is 12B. If you haven't figured it out by now, all of the Bs were taken with the D600, the full sensor camera. And it may not be as noticeable on any of the other images except for this one right here. Now what's really interesting is you can take a look at 12A and you can see all of the noise in the background. It's much more noticeable. And you look at 12B, you still have some noise, but it's not nearly as bad. Keeping in mind, we're at ISO 6400. 6400 on a crop sensor is always a little difficult, but take a look at what happens 
when we apply noise reduction in Lightroom. This right here, 13A, is the same image as 12A. See that? The only difference is I applied noise reduction at 80% in here. Now, 80% is quite a bit, but if you look at the end result, it really looks good. Now, I did the same thing in 13B. 13B is taken with the D600, and it is the same image as 12B. There's 12B, and there's 13B. It has the same amount of noise reduction applied. So if you look at the 2 and 13, they look pretty similar. There's 13A, and there's 13B. 13A, and 13B. As I captured these images, I did try to keep the aperture and the ISO the same. Now, when I went inside to take some darker lit images, I had to increase the ISO to really see how the full frame camera shines. Now, I'm curious to know your thoughts, so leave them in the comments below. Are you able to really tell the difference between the full frame and the crop sensor? And if your budget is relatively tight and you can afford to get into the crop sensor only, don't feel bad. I think this is still a great camera and I think it can take some professional quality images. You got to keep in mind that years ago this is what professional photographers shot with. It was crop sensors. It wasn't always the full sensor. Today these full sensors are expensive and they can garner more information. So if your budget allows for it and you want to get into the full sensors, go ahead, jump on it. But again, you know, it's really personal preferences and you got to keep in mind what is it you're going to do with the image? You know, in this day and age, I don't think many people print them like they used to. Back in the day, everyone used to print images, and that's where the quality really became an issue. But in this day and age, more often than not, people share their images via digital means. So Snapchat, Instagram, email, things like that, just online. So printing images really is not the issue that it once was. So it's just something to think about. Let me know your thoughts below. I'm curious. If this video has helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. It's called Real World. More often than not, I post videos about photography and technology, but you never know. So until the next video, take care of yourself and be safe.